Welcome to One Way to Machines and the B7 Audi RS4 series. Super rare Audi RS4. Oh man, these wheels look so good. Okay, all jokes aside, the RS4 rescue video by Legit Street Cars. I just thought I'd go over some of the things that I saw in the video, which is my take on it. So the question is brought up of can the carbon covers be sanded? Now, you guys, I have it on the channel. I have sanded, I have a full DIY on this. So it is possible, but I do think it depends on the condition. And the ones on that Sprint Blue RS4, they're pretty much red and totally beat. So maybe he'll be able to sand it. It'll be interesting to see. But here's an example of one, like my front one was way yellowed out. Okay, and the, the benefit of what I have here is this is from three years ago. And actually some of my viewers had asked me on Instagram if these have held up. And yes, with the heat cycling, the process I use in my DIY video has held up. So let's see what he does with the Sprint Blue car. Getting them rewrapped, there is a place I think called Black Goat Industries. There's a couple people on Instagram and stuff that rewrap them. We might eventually do it with these, but it has not been necessary to date. These have looked great the way that I like them. So on some more technical aspects for people actually doing it. I mean, I have the DIYs on this car. I know that that channel is not DIYing it, but still there are tips given. So I'm going to tell you what I thought about some of it. The absolute biggest thing that I'm going to say here is remove the flaps. Okay. People lose engines over the years because of not removing the flaps. The flaps fatigue, the screws back out, even if you go to put them back after cleaning. Unless you're getting a brand new intake manifold, which even way back in the day. Like, I'm a forum geek too, okay? So, these are very specific cars. I mean, the guy on that channel has a lot of experience with lots of European cars. But to uh, skim over the flaps issue with these... They are metal, there's 16 screws, I go over to my videos, they can fall in and cause catastrophic engine damage. Now you'll say, okay, stop making a big deal out of it, just get a new engine or get it rebuilt. There's people currently in the United States, okay, on the forums, who, with a lot of struggle, failed connector rod bearing, say a flap falls in, a screw falls in, something of that nature happens, Buddy is in for about 27 G's US because he found a refurb engine to install, okay? $27,000 for a refurb engine restall, reinstall. And that takes a shop a long time to do on a car like this. So, I know he's getting that car back on the road. I don't care, it's 80,000 miles, 100,000 miles, 20,000 miles. Remove your flaps at this time, okay? It even happened to people when they were new. Again, I have DIY videos on to how to carefully do all of that okay so go look at the history of the channel this car with my methods has been perfect for the past three years and those of you that watch my channel know that i beat on this car a lot when it's warm the other thing that i was going to say is once he gets the manifold off there's a vacuum line going across the front look we, it happens to all of us okay these cars have so many crazy lines i couldn't tell you if it was something that I had to remove her but from what I remember it was a plastic piece that goes into one of the little things that you got to pop out you don't have to completely remove I think it was a line in this area he removes mid-air in the video you don't have to do that did I possibly forget putting some vacuum lines back on the first time yeah that stuff under the manifold which we'll get to next there's a lot of intricate vacuum lines there so actually before that I'm going to discuss over here okay when he removes the throttle body and everything which is great another bonus tip for those of you that are new to the my channel watching it 4000 k rpm limp which happens to these is usually a throttle body is bad electronic throttle body there are a few from the corvette z06 actually a gm part number that you could use because the throttle bodies from audi are over two thousand dollars us i still have mine that's perfectly fine so I'd misdiagnosed it the first time, but this one is from Rock Auto, Smart Auto Products. 
You can go watch the other videos for more details, but there are a few options for throttle bodies and it is a common fault on B7 RS4s, especially with the age that they're getting. So before we come back to the intake manifold, on the removal, there's one hose that was not mentioned in that video. And if by some means he sees this video, it would be interesting to see what he did because there's different things. And I remember when I saw the video, those of you that watch my channel will know there is a piece at the back, okay, between the PCV and the actual PCV box, which has the coolant that runs up that is supposed to warm the PCV air. I did the cut and I've talked about why I did it the way I did it and a lot of other people have done it this way. But the super Ron way of taking that one T30 out the back, T25 out the back is the best way to keep the stock stuff. From what I saw, he took the manifold off with that small silver piece at the back. So whether he cut it or put a new one or something else, I don't know. Maybe he did something completely different. But again, watch the channel because that hose getting way, way down under there to remove that one properly is next to impossible. Okay, he does remove the one just closer here. Okay, it's like a vacuum line. He clearly shows that he moves it, but he doesn't talk about the one back there. Again, that channel is not geared towards showing every step by step. I just want to tell those of you who are thinking that, oh, this guy made an RS4 look so easy. Trust me, when you're in your garage, it won't be as easy as that, okay? There's a lot of other things. Now, see, I'm already jumping around, but I'll tell you the other part, okay? That car clearly did have a valve cover leak, the sprint blue one in that video, and he shows it at the back over there. But the oil in the spark plug hole could sometimes be coming from the cam girdle seal. You see here, between here, that also can leak oil into your spark plugs on both sides. And that's a much more involved job than doing the valve cover gaskets, okay? Valve cover gaskets are a joke. So beware of that. And there are people on the forums that do the valve cover gaskets and then only find out that it is the cam girdle seals. A lot of people do cam girdle seals engine out. If you do it engine in, which we might do here, oh man, it's a it's a bear of a task. Gonna be very, very tricky to do, especially with not redoing timing and possibly zip tying cams and marking stuff, all kinds of next stuff that we'll get into for those of you that actually watch the my channel for the RS4 stuff. Uh, what else was there? So the main thing, like I said, was the flap removal. Definitely do it on this. It's different than the other cars. This is a completely different manifold than a B6, B7, S4. Now the other thing is, okay, what I was talking about is way back here. All right, that coolant line thing, the, the PCV heater hose one. That's one of the biggest gotchas on this, which happened to me the first time until... I figured it out, okay? And there was no mention of that, so I wanted to mention it. Again, some of the fuel system components, I remove a bit more of it. I don't remove a bunch of stuff that he did, like the brake booster stuff and other things back there, but everybody finds a way to do it, okay? Again, all this stuff specific, I go over it in the Carbon Clean DIY video series. Also, definitely cover stuff up, okay? Because even though he says they're gonna detail that car, it's gonna be really tough to get in there and clean everything properly. Although these cars do have a lot better electronic sealing, but with old cars and cars with as rare and sensitive of a motor as this, you don't take any risks. It's not a Civic, okay? Now, on the t note of washing the, the manifold, okay? You see, there's people, very experienced people on the major forum that actually do try to rebuild the flap sometimes, which is still something nobody should have inside of an RS4 in North America or anywhere in the world at this point. There are tunes for it, okay? You can't tune it to have it optimized. There are companies that do that, but you don't even need a tune, okay? The car will just idle a bit rough sometimes when it's cold and it goes away after about a minute, 45 seconds top. Sometimes it's 15 seconds and then the car performs perfectly fine. Oh, but you lose your low end torque at low RPM. No, you don't. It's a joke. You don't realize it. Okay. Plus not having the flaps gives you better high RPM pull. 
And honestly, if you're so soft that you drive this thing at 2000 RPM and you want to show off the wide fenders to all the people around you, I mean, go get another car, okay? This car is made to live above 3000 RPM. Every component on it is at its prime when it is above 3000 RPM, all right? Be closer to eight all the time. Connector rod bearings, we'll get into that stuff later in another one of my own videos, but to remember things that happened in that video off the top of my head. Yeah, when he's washing the, the manifold from upside down, I don't disagree, okay? But say, look over here on this Volvo stuff, okay, on the T5 here. This, uh, uh, I'm kind of tired. I forgot what this is called. This is like the valve cover, cam cover. Is it called a cam cover, okay? This has been stripped of every single seal, okay? There's no seals. In that case, I would use a pressure washer with this piece on its own to try to clean it up. Now, say for example, this upper intake, lower intake manifold still has some of the O-rings for the five fuel injectors. I wouldn't use a pressure washer to do that, okay? You can get away with a lot of all this stuff if you're very careful but it's just stuff that isn't worth taking a risk, okay? And on this, before I lose my train of thought, the rods inside are not sensitive, as is stated in that video. Yes, the screws and the flaps themselves, you gotta be real delicate. Go watch my video from way back in the day, Intake Manifold Something RS4, from like two or three years ago, and you'll see how difficult it is to get those bolts and stuff out. But you're not gonna break the shaft. Very high quality, okay? It's a serious, almost like a mini camshaft, but maybe not as tough as a camshaft, but it's it's good enough, all right? Now, there's two potentiometers at the front and the back. Again, whether he removed them or not before he washed it, I don't know. But even if he did, on the inside of that shaft, okay, over here where it gets to those potentiometers, and remember, this one you have to remove the manifold to change that potentiometer. You can't do it with it in the car. You have to, and this one, you got to go service position. But again, we'll get into that. You guys who've watched the, the, the RS4 series on my channel know all the many things that go wrong on this car and what we fixed to date, okay? And there's even more stuff buried everywhere. But the point here is that shaft, if you're keeping the flaps, you want to put water in there, there are, uh, if I remember correctly, on that one thread with that person who was trying to rebuild it, and I'm only saying this not to nitpick at that video, okay? But the person was experienced, someone with four or five Audis, you guys know those crazy people on the forums, okay? They tried to rebuild this with, I think, a brown and a yellow seal, and they kept getting vacuum leaks from the shafts because they completely took the manifold apart. So I agree with what he did with not taking the manifold fully apart, like splitting it in half and stuff. That stuff is pretty much useless, okay? The PCV is always gonna kick oil in there. And right when you put it back on, there's gonna be oil on all of the walls. But pressure washing it, I'm sure he was very careful. That guy's a licensed mechanic, okay? But if you are more of a novice and you, you drink a couple beers with your friends and you're going at it with the pressure washer, you do not want to get anything into those seals possibly, okay? You could possibly damage them. You could damage something else. And even more than that, again, he's being careful with the manifold. Like I said, anything like this that you do pressure washing, I prefer to completely strip, okay? No seals, no nothing. The other thing you need to be careful, obviously, is the plugs are friction fit, and he didn't touch those, which is, again, these have all been popped out on mine, but you do wanna be careful of that, okay, to not pop these out, but that would be pretty hard to do, and you'd have to be pretty brainless to, to shoot those out with the pressure washer, but just watch out for that. And, see, if you deflap it, it's really easy to just clean it up with brake cleaner, which is what you should all be doing the first time you get this off anyways. Do not reinstall it with the flap. Some of the purists will disagree, but dude, it is not worth what happens. And plus, like I said, your top end is even better. You lose some torque on the low end, but it's okay. So the last point here was, yeah, okay, there's electronics and seals and stuff. Just make sure it's stripped. You don't need to pressure washer it, but you can get away with it. And I'm sure 
the person in that video did everything just fine. Okay, now I, I picked up my train of thought again here. What I was saying is underneath here, you have those bellows, the one and two with the little plastic arms that move the rod inside. Because even if you take your flaps out, you're leaving the rod. Remember I said taking it fully apart to try to rechange the seals and do crazy stuff like rebuild the flaps, put new flaps in or something. And plus you can't buy the flaps separately from Audi. You have to buy a whole manifold, okay? But some people try to take them out and put new screws on and just don't do it. Again, those flaps, if you tighten the old one too much and they're fatigued, there's a chance it's going to break and fall in. But to get back to the topic I was just trying to make, underneath there, okay, you can see this flipped upside down in his video, in my older videos, everything. Those vacuum lines under there, they like to crack and break, okay? You got to watch out for those if you're over there with water or even if you're just storing this or moving it around. And also those pieces, everything under here is like 500 bucks and you might have to wait for two to three weeks for everything to come from Germany. So again, I mean, he's not as nerded out about this specific car, but parts availability is a thing, okay? So not to crush anybody's dreams, but if you saw that video and you're like, oh cool, you know, he did it in one video, all that stuff and it runs so great, let me go buy an RS4. It better be your second car, okay? In 2024, this should be your second car. Unless you have way crazier cars and you can use those as dailies when this one needs parts, okay? Parts are gonna be scarce. Vacuum lines can break. Everything is sensitive under this manifold. I don't know how, I can't remember how much he tore everything apart, but I don't think he did. He just did the minimums of pulling stuff in and out. And there's lots of hoses and vacuum lines and stuff on this car that are pretty robust. And there's ones that are really soft and are literally falling apart. I mean, there's some on this car that I have, there's actually one under the manifold that has been busted, but hasn't leaked on a smoke test for years on my car. Okay. But all I'm trying to say is the style of YouTube videos and it happens to almost all YouTubers. They go away from DIY because first of all, DIY YouTube, it's almost dead, okay? I mean, it's the style that I always wanted to do. Go to my tripod. Is a style that I always wanted to do, but it just isn't the viable form anymore. Oh, and now that I've moved the frame out, he talks about ordering a hood strut. So if somehow he finds out about this video and watches it or whatever, I hope he tells us what he gets the hood strut from. Because in the overly nerdy RS4 community, there are people who say getting an A4 hood strut, which should be completely fine, will actually flex the hood on this car because it's aluminum and it's steel on the S4s and the A4s. So that'll be interesting, okay? I mean, personally, I have always been, I'm just gonna get an A4 hood strut. I actually tried to get one from a car that was being parted out. That is where I got my trunk mat from, from a B7A4 2.0T. So, because the person who sold this to me didn't give me the trunk mat for some reason. But the hood strut is going to be interesting. You guys have seen this ridiculous setup that I've used all the time. Now the vice grip thing, yeah, I've known about it for all these years. But that 2x4 with the microfibers, it's just so convenient. I mean, and being an Audi, even when you're out on the road, there's going to be times when you're going to have to pop the hood. And that's like second nature. It's almost faster than a hood strut going up. I just grab that from the back seat, boom, I put it in and the hood's up. So I still like that. I hope he tells us if he got it from an A4 because that part, I tried to get it from an Audi dealer last year when I did that big repair stint in the front here and Buddy so told me that the Audi system at both dealers, which is obviously the same, they use the same system, that has been out of production since 2019. So unless he has you no know, some shop with one sitting on a shelf and it's an actual RS4 hood strut, Again, they say that the rates of everything and the fluid are different on these, which, I mean, it's a different part number at Audi. But I've talked to an Audi 
uh, specialist shop around here once when I took this car there. Just, you know, trying to shop around for shops if there's times that I don't want to do work on it myself. And he kind of laughed and he was like, oh, just get an A4 hood strut. Like those people are crazy who think it's going to bend the hood. And I still think that way. I don't think anyone's done it. I think it's just the RS4 world has some interesting minds, let's put it, in it. Okay? A lot of... It's, it's a nice, nice people, okay? With some of them with different ideas. Okay, that's, that's all I'll go into that. And so yeah, the hood strut will be interesting because he said he has that on order. And my guess is he'll probably do injectors too at some point. But he already put the manifold back on. But that's the, the, the beauty of what he has. He's got a shop. He's got multiple cars. He can do that. I mean, there are people who have reached out to me to work on their cars. They're RS4s. And as much as I'd love to, it's honestly not worth it at this point, right? It's a bit too difficult for me to do that. If some people want to pay for it. I'd probably consider it. But you see, that's the, those YouTubers that make it big. Yeah, okay. All right, we'll leave, we'll leave that there. Uh, is there anything else? Yeah, he talks about putting a K and N filter in it. It looked kind of like the AEM filter, dry filter that I have in here. But, I mean, let me plug my own video in here for a second. Go watch my air filter video. The option that I give for the dry filter, I go over all the benefits of it that why I use the dry filter instead of a K and N. And everything else, I mean, he did the valve cover. The valve covers too, there is a split, I think in 07 or 08, where they change the design a bit. So when you are ordering valve cover gaskets, in his, he snipped a portion of one of them. I can't remember exactly why he did that. I think it's, they are slightly different. But whatever he got fit. And that those look like parts from ECS or the dealer or something. But there are people on the forums. I have seen threads saying definitely cross check it with your VIN. So that you do get the correct valve cover gasket. Now using anaerobic sealant on cam girdle seals and stuff at the back. Is something that through the actual the 2.0T forum. On the major forum. Okay I don't use the names of people or forums or stuff. Because you never know what the internet who might react to what in what way? And even this video, that's the reason I'm being very... What, what do I say? I, I'm trying not to mention any names or anything odd, okay? Because you don't know what people are going to react like. And in today's sensitive world, it's like... Jeez, like... Okay, alright. To get back on topic... Yeah, that's what I was saying. There are on the major forums, people on the... B7 2.0T side were extremely knowledgeable about Audis and help a lot, okay? I'm not saying the B7 RS4 side. Everything's good there, okay? Things are alive and well. And what I will say, okay, and I think this video is the right time to say it, is sure, I'm a YouTuber to a degree, okay? I do this, all right? You guys have known it. I tried, tried to make videos that are helpful for a long time, but people, keep the forums alive. I know it sounds like an ancient chant, like I'm like a, some tribal person, okay? But that is the place where we're gonna keep these alive. And just to give you guys a heads up, I mean, if you start thinking about getting an RS4, okay, wait, before that, before I go into that, yeah, what I was saying about the rear timing covers and the cam girdle seals, if we do it in the car, it's gonna be anaerobic sealant. Please subscribe for that if I do it in car but we're probably going to pull the motor on this car and do a bunch of other stuff. I'm probably also going to do rod bearings at some point too on this, okay? And actually, that would be really interesting if for the Sprint Blue car, he does do king-coated rod bearings for the car because there's a handful of cases, like I've said, that happens here and there. People blow out rod bearings, okay? I mean, I haven't done no oil analysis for this car. I don't know if there's copper in the stock ones in this car. I know BMW for the E90, E9X cars, they change their design halfway through. So even if you do get oil analysis, the older ones won't show wear, but I don't think they wear. Again, vac bearings for the E90, E9X M3, if we ever get one, is what we're going to do. But for this, King bearings, 
is probably what we're going to do. But let's see what, what we end up doing and how much engine in, how much engine out, blah, blah, blah. All right. Okay. But what I was saying about the forums, okay, in the UK, okay, rough numbers, 3,500 RS4s in the UK, 3,500 in Germany, 2,000 in North America, and the last 1,000 are scattered around the world. Because the cars have fallen apart from rust, and still back in the day, if you go look at, I think, RS246 is what it's called, the UK site is way weaker than the American site, okay? And now that in the UK, they've lost a lot of these to rust, which again, I will repeat, do not winter drive un until you get everything coated properly underneath. Or if you're rich, you'll probably just drive <laughs> drive the one you have down to the ground and then you'll just buy another one because there's still enough of them around for that kind of behavior. But the point here is that forum, that sub forum is what's going to keep us all going, okay? I'm on there. There's a lot of other people on there. I talk like a normal person there. I'm not like, oh, I'm some YouTuber, blah, blah, blah. I'm the, the YouTube RS4 guy. No, you just talk like a normal person. Everybody has the same issues. A lot of people are scared to talk about the issues because they want to keep the value of this particular car up. The values will stay up, okay? People like these things. They're becoming classics to a degree. But the driver ones and even the lowest mileage ones. See, my car might actually fare far better than one that has 50, 60,000 kilometers. We're not going to get into low mileage old cars and the specific things that host of problems that those cars can have. But the point here is post your problem on the forums. There's still enough people active there that we can quickly solve these things together. And another reality figure that maybe the legit streetcars channel will mention at some point is parts availability is becoming scarce for these on some things some things we still have a lot of aftermarket support there are companies that do have things aftermarket so just be ready to have your pocketbook open and you're gonna have to have creativity or a really good european mechanic to work on it for you if you are not a person that's handy with a wrench Okay, so this is still a great car. I'm interested to see what keeps going on with that Sprint Blue car. But I just wanted to, I mean, this is my only chance on YouTube to kind of get a plug in there on my own channel with the bigger channel that has finally worked on this car. And hopefully, I mean, the algorithm picks it up or you guys spread it or something. And this video can kick my stuff up a bit. But that's not the main point. I just, the, the main point of this was I wanted to point out some of the more specific things that super nerds after a few years have. And the person on that channel has that kind of knowledge about Mercedes for the most part. Okay. So I could work on any Mercedes too if I get it in here, BMW, whatever. But I'm not going to be as much of an expert on it the first day or first week I get it. Okay. And there are still people on the forums that are far more nerded out than me about this and have gone a lot further, even in their garages, pulling the whole drivetrain and everything. So just because that car, that sprint blue car is on a hoist and everything is like that, don't fall for it. That car is not, these cars are not easy to work on. They will absolutely test your patience regardless of how good of a mechanic you are and what you've worked on. Okay. And just another funny some other interesting things that I've recently seen on this car. Let's have a different uh, time of something. If you follow this runner here, okay, this intake manifold runner across, do not touch the paint with that stick. Look at that. It is in front of the turn signal. That's crazy. That is some crazy. This is literally a reverse Porsche, okay? It's breathing air in front of part of the headlight and these aren't even some crazy stupid 2024 design he headlights that are part of the entire car that was a cool point i have the cowl back on okay i'll show you guys what i'm talking about under there too but really gr interesting en engineering under there too with the strut top mount uh connecting the rod i forget what it's called right now but that thing is beautiful. It's a piece of solid, 
thick steel. I'll show you guys that more in depth in a future video. And yeah, the other thing that he mentions in that video is, yes, take a look at my beautiful garbage can and all the normal DIY or garage <laughs> crap that I have. But you see this, you see my car. One of the main things, I kept this car on 255s. People do 265s, 275s, and they get away with it. But if you'll remember on that Sprint Blue car with the BBSs, even if those BBSs are 255, 35, 19s, which is the stock size on this car, they, whoever had them most, most definitely put spacers on it because you can see how far out they were. And like he shows, it has been rubbing and there was a whole bunch of rust there. I kept everything inside, 255s are inside. And that car, one thing he didn't mention for the suspension that I saw is that car still has DRC. So his friend or whatever it is, they're gonna, there, there'll definitely be probably an interesting coilover series on that car. I got KWs on this and I love them. Let's see what they put on that car because that DRC system is going to fail and start leaking and they won't find parts for it, okay? All the hoarders on the forum have got it. And if that guy has the connections to get full DRC, I hope some of you tell him to try to do it to keep the, what do you call it? Purest level of the car up. But that'll be a real, real interesting thing if he can find four DRC shocks. There might still be some left. Because I do see RS4s for sale sometimes even up north here where people are selling three DRC shocks with it and they say one's leaking. But the big point with DRC, okay, here I keep, I'm keeping on going. But the big point with DRC, it's not even that if your shocks aren't leaking or if you can change the shocks. You need a specialized tool, high PSI to refill the system. And anyone who's been under these and knows the truth about it, those accumulator valves in the back and the lines and everything really like to rust, okay? And if the car's been winter driven, those lines can also fail. It's just better off putting coilovers on these cars. It improves the handling and this car is extremely comfortable. I've driven this car, I don't th I think the, the one of the first distances was 400, 500 kilometers each way. And it's completely comfortable, especially with the comfort seats that come with the car, which don't sleep on them. Wing backs aren't all they're scoped out to be. They look beautiful. They're great. I'm not hating on them. I'd love to get them, but the comfort seats are a lot better than people make out, make them out to be. They are actually comfortable seats with, and you're not tracking this car. Okay. Nobody's tracking this car. Now coming back here, what I was saying, I kept 255s, kept them inside. Now the, other, the final point I wanted to make here before I probably went off on some tangent was you see this part here, there's also a phenomenon on RS4s that have spacers and wider tires. Even sometimes like this, not only does that paint chip there say if it was spacered out, it'll get a wavy, ridgy thing, probably from the wheel moving like this, that damages this rear quarter. And it looks really weird. I've seen pictures of it twice from people that it's happened to, and it's not a pretty thing. So really, I mean, you see, and this is again, this is because the people coming from that video, a lot of them might be more novice into this. It's very tempting to all of a sudden throw big wheels and tires and you watch a couple Audi videos. Ooh, this is the Audi cheat code to have big tires all around and you'll have great handling. These things, believe it or not, actually have a lot better handling than most Audis that you may have driven or you think. Now I'm not saying it's the one, two pounds here and there with the aluminum that's done, is, done it for it, but the engine is lighter, it's got good power, and the 255s are on it. The S4, B6s and B7s are a bit heavier in the front, but this car, everything, will go over all the small little details that are different but it handles decently on normal roads. Now, because I've been watching more YouTube than producing stuff, I have some random stuff that I can talk about here. And there's another excellent video on a channel called Flint Films, if I'm remembering correctly, and this will focus. What the guy did there is he rebuilt a red B6S4. 
And I'm not going to get into that video completely, but that is a video you should honestly go watch because he says he put a terabyte of footage into it. Do you know what a terabyte is? The videos I make fill up my SD card and take a long time for me to finally get around to editing them. But a terabyte over six months, that is a worthwhile watch if you're an Audi fan. That, that video of that B6S4. But the main thing I want to say about that video, and the guy acknowledges it himself, is that he made a mistake by even thinking his B6A4 3.0 was a rally cross car and the, the S4. And I'm gonna go as far as to tell, I don't know how many of you think like this, okay, but we all make mistakes, all right? This is also not a rally cross car. This car, the reason I'm a big fan of it is, let's talk about a hypothetical freeway with traffic that is moving on free land that you own. You can go any speed with this car and zip through everything if you're a good driver and it is just perfect. So people talk about these things being slow on the internet too. I'm not si sitting here saying, oh yeah, these are rocket ships. No, they're not the best off the line, okay? But that's not what they're meant to do. You see, you don't autocross a B6S4 like the guy says in that Flint Films video himself. You don't autocross a B7 RS4. This car will probably do pretty good on the ring because the turns are more smooth, okay? Sharp turns are not for an Audi, not even for this one, okay? Maybe RS3s, I mean, okay, I'm, I'm really going off on a bunch of tangents, but I'll keep going. RS3s, Humble Mechanic recently had that RS3 and he put on a trailer and I was shocked because those of you who know all the Volvo stuff, I don't know how many people still follow from the Volvo days, but... This is still here and we might do something with it. I'll get into that afterwards. But my V50 front end looked exactly like that RS3. You see, Clarkson said way back in the early 90s in one of his videos, if you guys have ever seen, Volvo, he says, ripped a five cylinder off of Audi for the 850. Audi had done it before. But Volvo mounted it transverse. And that was the really interesting part. Audi never did a transverse five cylinder until the RS3, okay? And look at this, people. You see this drivetrain from a V50 T5 all wheel drive, six speed manual. That's the M66 over there. And RS3, the newest ones, Daza 8V. Sorry, guys, I don't know the codes for that car very well. But that is a car that is the same setup. It's Haldex, it's exactly like this. So an RS3 is essentially something ripped off of a Volvo S40. Now, I'm not gonna get into why a Volvo S40 might not be a good idea. Electrical Gremlins, <clears throat> maybe other stuff. I still love those cars. I might get another P1 because I've, I've always been saying that the, the RS3 is just a glorified S40. It's probably a lot better. Okay, I'll take that back, but it's the same setup. Audi now took their five-cylinder design from Volvo. You see, they went back and forth with it. But let's not get too much into that. I can't even remember what I was saying about this. There was a final point about this car. And yeah, that was, I was talking about the hypothetical highway scenario. You can zip through anything with this, all right? And if they're sweeping turns off ramps, look, anything, say California, normal US highways, stuff like that, well, we're not talking about that. We're talking about hypothetical highways. Hypothetical highways based off of real world highways in North America. This car can do everything almost better than any other car. All right? Unless you really want to do your sideways burnout, which I love that kind of stuff. But see, that's one reason I didn't get that. Okay, I'm not going to make myself sound like that. But look, if, if you have the means to go sideways on on-ramps all the time, good on you. But if you don't, this car is better than all of those rear wheel drive cars, if it's gonna be your only other car. Now, I'm not gonna turn this into, I, I'm gonna make videos on why I like this car later on. I kinda touched on a lot of topics in this video, but I'm just free speech did almost one take, okay? There'll be some small edits in it for times when I check my battery, which I think it's running out on my mic right now. But this is a great 
road car and keep your tires 255, 35, 19. We might do a project where we get bigger wheels and tires on this car properly. But if you are going to spacer them out, say like on the Sprint Blue car in the legit street car video, do not hit potholes and go out on a Sunday to a car show or go out to a restaurant, go out to a nice place. Don't take the risk of bottoming out stuff and damaging paint because fixing that rear quarter, you don't only go to the body shop and tell them to change a rear quarter, you've got the Audi RS tax on top of that, which will vary wildly across North America. And on that note, thanks for watching the video. I hope some of the bigger channels come across this. I'm not trying to hate on anybody. It is all just for entertainment and information. So let's see what the future holds. Thanks for watching guys and I will try to make videos going forward.